I have an interesting little project underway here um, using the MyFit lathe, machining up these uh, these bosses or hubs uh, which are designed to go inside that, uh, that gear. So basically uh, it has to fit inside there but in reverse on the other side has to be a, a reasonably snug fit and uh, also making up these hubs or, or these cups I should say uh, they're designed to slide over the top. Um, this is out of a door, automatic door mechanism. We're making a manual override for a commercial automatic door. Um, this piece over here is just my little test piece to make sure that the, the shaft that these are going to fit on is, is going to be spot on. And uh, yeah, so, so far they are the ones that have been absolutely uh, come up really well, properly manufactured, looking, looking the part. Um, And uh, there's the piece um, ready to turn now. So it's two pieces of metal that have been welded together and it's been roughly drilled. So I'm just machining the outside now. So I'll be machining there to get that to size. Then I'll do the, the back plate um, and then the boring. So I'll basically do a little uh, photo showing you bit by bit as we, uh, as we proceed. So, turning the lathe on, down here, um, as you see it part of the way through a cut now, this is the first skimming cut, lathe is on, engage, and we're just now skimming off the first piece, it doesn't go completely to the end because of the way I have the tool angle, um, I'll do that when I do a finishing off stroke. That's it, that's reached the end of its stop. So, not too worried about leaving any marks behind there coming back, and it's just a case of taking it down bit by bit. I usually use the uh, graduations here. I normally take it down about uh, 15 to 20 at a time, so just winding in on there and on there, bringing it around to where it's even. And she's ready now to make the next cut. Uh, applying some oil. It's running a little bit higher speed than, uh, than normal, but it's, it's working quite well. Engaging, and away we go for the next cut. So stay tuned and I'll show you what it's like when I get to the end. Okay, we're away again. We haven't got to the finishing cut yet. We've got to get this down to around 36 mil. Um, so just doing a slightly finer cut this time around. Get to add the oil. I tend to use uh, tool steel for cutting them. I find it works quite well. Tungsten is just as good, of course. A good fill steel does just as good a job in cutting mild steel. Coming up to the end of the run, disengage. Just take up that last bit by hand. The clutch up here where I can disengage. On the tool back and then obviously making the next cut there actually was sitting on 90 I just knocked that before so it's going to go 10 this time and we're ready to go again okay well we're basically almost down to the size I'm requiring which is 35.99 in metric I've just done a very light skimming coat, as you can see by the swarf sitting in the tool there. And uh, on the micrometer here, I don't know if you can see it at all, but we're very, very close to the uh, target. And only about uh, two points out, so probably we'll just use a bit of emery tape, tape to just polish the, uh, the shaft at the end. So, for all intents and purposes, that section of the job is uh, is finished. And, uh, we're pretty well on size, which is good news. Okay, I've just given that a light polish now, and it's uh, it's come up to on size. So uh, I'm sitting exactly where I need to be 
setting at uh, 359.99, which is ideal. Um, so that part is finished. A um, little bit of emery just to, to polish that last bit off. Uh, those of you who um, are going to use lathes, um, and just keep in mind when you've used emery that you clean that swarf off the uh, the bed there because uh, emery, small bits of emery will drop onto there and you can cause a bit of wear and tear over time. So as soon as you've used emery, make sure you clean, give the bed a clean. All right, we're now ready to do the uh, the plate on the end. That's the next section. Okay, we're now ready to do the end plate. Um, the way I, I do this section is first I actually lock the carriage down. So the carriage is locked down. And as you can see, I've got the bit there uh, posed. I just wind in a few thou here. And then basically I just, I just do simply a, a board cut from there. As you can see, it's skipping there on the metal because the metal's a little bit out of true, having been welded on. And uh, just wind it down. And just do that till I get to the required size. So, it's obviously, Sipping it off. See by the smoke, it's got a little bit of oil on there. Yeah. Don't take it right to the end, just fairly close, because I'll, I'll do a finishing cut right at the very end. Take it back. Um, just using my trusty brush to clean that small force so you can see what we're doing. And uh, yeah, just, we'll just wind in, wind in a little bit more. Same thing again, just a rotation in, and now it's starting to clean up uh, quite nicely. Now when I get to this section here, um, I'm actually going to take a measurement now before I go any further. This outer uh, piece has to actually be machined down in size to, to make sure I'm not taking off too much. I'll now take a measurement just to double check. I'm glad I did a check of that. I was actually just taking a tad too much material off. Um, my finish size there is uh, is 12 millimeter, and it was spot on 12 millimeter with that cut. But I like to do a finishing cut at the end, so I'm just taking off this material this time. And we'll just take this again down. I'm only winding this in by hand. I don't have the luxury of having a, a power feed. Or in this direction, anyhow. And we'll just take it down to just off the shaft slightly and now there's some little fine adjustments and uh, we'll get that, um, that piece finished. Okay with this particular exercise, I'll just shut the motor down, we're uh, almost finished. You can see that uh, first cut I made, that's, that'll end up coming off cleanly. Um, I'm almost down to my finished size. This is not a critical component as far as thickness, so I, I just use a, uh, a vernier and I'm down to 12.15. So I've just got to get that down now to 12.00 uh, to, to and we'll, we'll be right. So uh, just do this finishing piece and that'll finish that section and then the next job we'll be doing the, uh, the boring operation. In a fraction of a millimetre here, um, I'm just going to wind in just a tad here and I can do it on a, on a slight back cut and that acts like a finishing cut. That should bring it to absolutely spot on. So just easing it back slowly gives you a reasonably good finish. I still see my initial cut mark there, very close, very close to the exact twelve there. Just a whisker off. Pretty well almost took that mark out. So looking good. So as expected, I'm happy with that. Um, it's come out very, very close to the figure I'm looking at, 11.99. So as I said, it's not a critical part. This as far as thickness. It can vary by a uh, probably half a mil or so. But um, that's so close to the 12 that I'm looking for. Um, yeah, that's finishing two surfaces now. So on to the next stage. Stage of the operation is I've just got to get this this length here. This from there to there has to be 
um, 46.10 just a whisker off the uh, the end of the shaft just to uh, tidy it up and I'll I'll have the length I'm looking for so I'll see if I can do this one-handed we should be able to working lathes for about 50 years now so it'll look, look become second nature I love these bifids they're a good lathe so all I'm doing here, I'm going to skim a little bit off here, uh, bring the tool up till it just touches, and away we go. Now, although that is not completely clean, I need to just check my measurements, which I will do now. Okay, look, I have my uh, 46 point. One zero, and this is basically the, uh, the final cut just to, to clean the end off. So now I have the correct shaft length. I will now have to just put a little chamfer on the outside, and I'll begin the uh, the, the boring operation now with the boring tool to finish the internal shaft. Okay, for this operation now, I've got my uh, my boring tool. These, these quick release tool posts are absolutely fabulous. Um, the bit I'm using is a uh, tungsten tip uh, boring bit, so she's ready to to start the boring operation. I don't have too many passes to do here, so uh, basically lathe on, touches engaged up here. Must have forget. I did forget to turn off before. Just bring her up close. Engage the drive. I have a marker on my uh, tool, so I know how far to take it. And now we're doing the actual boring operation. Fairly slow feed. There's no need to. I don't need to be fast with this one. I could go a bit faster. But I'm quite happy with that. Put a little lubricating oil inside. Away we go, and when it gets to that um, that mark uh, down here on the uh, there it is, there's here with a black mark, and I've uh, reached the end. I don't obviously want to run my bit into the uh, the, the chuck. <laughs> not a not a good idea. <laughs> so we'll just let that run through now. But all as well. Okay, for this operation, uh, I have to be precise with the internal measurements there because it's to go onto a main driving shaft. Uh, the tool I use to, to measure is this. Obviously, it's a, it's a telescopic type of measurement tool. It's spring-loaded. You just basically put it in, push it forward, and then you take that over to your micrometer, which is here. And then, obviously, you take your measurement from there, and that'll give it to me very precisely. This particular case, I've got to get down to 22 millimeter precise. So here we go again. Back to the lathe. You can see, that's the current measurement. It's uh, 21.42, so it's got to come down to precisely uh, 22.00. Um, I use the vernier initially before I change over to using the micrometer for precision. Um, so we're ready to basically to start boring again. Bringing the tool up into place, clutches on, engage the drive. Whoops, hang on, I have forgotten the oil yet. I'm going to stick a little bit of oil inside. I find with tungsten it doesn't always need oil, but I like a little bit of lube in there. Engage the drive, and away we go. You can hear cutting, cutting there quite nicely, no problems. what it's like when it gets towards the end. Okay, we're starting to come up towards my mark. And we'll hear it stop cutting as it comes through. Time to disengage. And there we go. Disengage clutch. And reverse her out. And then I will dial in the, uh, the next amount that I want to take out on the, on the gauge there. getting close to the final cut. Maybe two more cuts and I'll be there. Okay, uh, I won't get to see that final turn down. I had a little bit of difficulty with actually with the video. So uh, 
I've got a finish piece in there, basically that's down to finish size, I don't have to machine any more off it, it's, as you can see it's got the keyway in it as well too, but I do have another similar job to do, I've um, changed over to the tungsten tip, and uh, what's happening from here is one of those early pieces that I showed you that would have been welded on the back, we've taken that piece off, um, my partner in crime, my partner that's actually helped me, helping me with this, he does all the welding etc. Uh, we've now taken the, that back flange off and we've got to now produce, get this back to look something like that. So we've got a fair bit of material to take off, mainly because we've had to build up with a bit of weld and uh, as you can see it's been keyed and everything so I've got to get this now to look like that. So a uh, fair bit of turning there to do, should be interesting. So. Uh, on with the job and uh, oh by the way that's the shaft that's uh, out of the power unit uh, that's one of the shafts is the keyway in it which obviously you know slots into slots into there so uh, for the finished job so I've got to put the shaft with me just to be uh, checking the sizes uh, all the other units have gone back now to have their keyways and be machined as you can see on the side here they have to be machined there keyways put in and there's a um, rock screw goes into there. So yeah, now on with the job. Okay, ready to start turning. I've had to use the shaft. These flats that have been cut on here won't work in a three jaw chuck. I do have another bigger chuck uh, that I've ordered that's coming, but it hasn't turned up as of yet. So, so we just use the steady. Um, that looks a bit crude, but that's just to lock into the keyway, just to stop that part from moving. So uh, turn the unit on. We it should work out reasonably well. It's running reasonably true. So uh, I'll start uh, cutting now and uh, machine the uh, the back wall first, and uh, try to get the uh, get it all trued up, and I can turn the turn the job around. So yeah, interesting little uh, project this one. A lot of extra work. Uh, sometimes you wonder whether these things would be better off just starting afresh, but we'll see how we go. Okay, uh, starting with the first cut. Um, basically, I've locked the uh, locked the bed down. Um, so basically, the main control will be uh, over through here, and she's just hitting on the weld now. So I've got a very you've got it running on a slow speed, if you can probably see. It's very slowly uh, chopping that weld away. Uh, and it seems to be cutting quite well, so hopefully, uh, yeah, it'll come good. Looks terrible at the moment, but see how we end up. Hopefully, it'll uh, it's be good. Good job. The ste steadies are uh, a marvelous uh, tool got a lathe they're definitely worth the investment because the typical case like this gets you out of trouble. Okay it's cleaning up fairly well. Um, I get a bit worried sometimes when you're uh, trying to machine welds. The welding can change the composition of the metal sometimes and make it very hard but it's machining reasonably well. About to do another run and cutting fairly cleanly considering. Got to clean this back face up and then I can start working on the rest. Into the metal there now, peeling off quite well. Now she's hitting the weld. So good. Um, just under a mill to come off now, so this is the final cup. She's cleaning up quite well. 
So we'll just uh, start her up again and we'll just run through the um, final cut. You'll all, it's cutting into the metal, into the mild steel now and then you'll hear it hitting the weld shortly. The weld is a bit harder than the stiff the mild steel. Just take it right through. The back of this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's not a critical component on the back. Um, there's nothing up against it, so it doesn't matter if it's got a little bit of a rough look about it. But we'll still clean it up as best I can. You hear it making a clunking noise now, it's heading into the weld. Take it nice and slow. The thing with these jobs is to take it easy. Don't try to rush. Feeling off quite well. up very very well um, obviously got a little bit of work to do to clean out the inside but I'm now sitting at the, uh, the correct total length which is the same as this one here so basically it's the length that's the consideration I've just run the vernier over it and uh, yeah I've got the uh, the length down within a fraction of a millimetre, so I'll have to now machine some of this front part off now, uh, and obviously the back as well too, but uh, all's well so far. As a matter of interest too, this is being filmed on my uh, Apple um, iPhone XR, which is about 12 months old, and does a pretty good job of video, I think. Okay, uh, ready to start cutting on the outside, I've increased the uh, speed on the lathe, basically most of the speed control I do through just changing the belt so stepped it, stepped it up to the second highest that's available there. Uh, we'll start skimming the uh, the outside now. Um, I've got to take a fair bit of material off but do a light skim coat to start with to get the, the crap off and uh, see how we go from here and away we go engage the feed. Well, not as good as I expected. It's cleaning up okay, but uh, a bit of vibration there, so I'm just going to have to uh, sort that out a little bit. Shouldn't be too, too difficult to sort. Just find out what's causing it. Okay, relatively easy fix. Uh, I just had to put a little bit more tension here to, to clamp it down a bit firmer. It's obviously getting a bit of vibration on that shaft. The next cut uh, has worked out quite well, and I've also slowed the, uh, the speed down another notch. So uh, everything should be fine now. So the next, next pass should be a lot cleaner. Just engage the drive again and we'll apply a bit of oil. Nice and smoky, but yeah, you can see she's uh, forks coming off well, cutting nicely and no vibration. So just start working the way through it now. A lot, lot better. Okay, I'm uh, ready to make my, the rest of my cuts. I, I do a proximity mark, that little black mark there. That's how much material needs to be taken off. So I'll just work my way down to that mark. When I get close to it, then I'll start taking some accurate measurements. And I need to end up with the basically the same diameter as, as that. So a little bit of material to take off. Keep me busy for a few minutes. Radio. Five foot's going well. Um, you can see my little mark there. I'm getting very close down to it. So a couple more cuts and we'll be through to the final. Um, everything is going well. Uh, speed's okay. Feed's good. 
I'm about to make another cut. A little bit of oil. And uh, we'll engage the drive. And away we go. Quite I'm still not taking real big cuts with the way I have it suspended out onto the steady. I prefer to just take it a little at a time. Gets the job done. measurements now and careful I don't take off too much. Right down to the finished size so uh, apart from a little bit of polishing up that's the diameter we want on that uh, that outer boss. Um, I think I might try and clean up a little bit of that weld with the boring tool but I'll have to be very very careful there. Um, but uh, the ideal way would be to bore it from the inside but I might just take the worst of it off on the outside here to make it a little bit easier before I turn the job around. So here we go, on to the next stage. Okay, I'm going to try and do this one-handed for those who haven't seen the quick release for the, the tools. It's that simple. Um, boring tool basically drops straight in and there's a, as you can see the clamp there slides across like so, sorry, a little bit out of frame there, and that is now locked into place, so I've just got to position my tool now, and uh, we're ready to try and bore a little bit of that material out, so she's going to be a bit chunky to start with, see how we go. Then I fitted the external jaws to clamp the piece on the piece of machine, so She'll all run uh, lovely, lovely and true. Uh, no problems there at all. Um, so the next job is now I've got to skin that outer piece down. So as you can see, I've got a bit of material to, uh, to take off and then give it a polish up and we can then say the job has been completed. So on to the next section. Or should I say, on to the next stage. Okay. Um, you can see now where the um, machine that piece down now where that shoulder has now become part of the shaft. Um, obviously need to polish that up when I get a bit closer but I'm down within about half a millimetre now so it's, it's getting very very close. Slowed the speed up a little. I'm um, in a, a tad. But we're uh, very very close to uh, any size. Cutting well. Take her down so she nudges the shaft. And that's about where we need to be. So, uh, just take another measurement, but that should be so close to finished size now, it's not funny. Uh, all I need to do now is put a chamfer on that sharp edge and, uh, and I'll polish the shaft up. It's come up pretty well. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, it's cleaned up quite well. You can actually see the, the little join there, which has extended the length of the shaft, which is great because that gets me, uh, gets me out to the the correct size and we've now produced well, I'm hold that with one hand we've now produced uh, the right size looks a little strange there but yeah that's the right is actually the right thickness um, so uh, all I've got to do now is just clean the, uh, the bore up inside of the back that was where I um, obviously had that little bit of a drama with the weld 
So uh, yeah, we just uh, tidy up inside there now and uh, re-establish the, the keyway, which a bit of weld has filled. So that'll be relatively easy to, to sort out. So yeah, so finished job. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. But, um, if you'd like to see anything similar, please let me know. Um, I'm sure the experts out there would pick a few faults with, with my work, but at the end of the day, there's a number of ways you can do a job. And in this case, it's, uh, it's worked out spot on to what I need. And uh, thanks to the mighty uh, Myford layers, terrific layers, they really are.